Thank you, Jeff. And good morning, everyone. Um, it is indeed both an honor and privilege to be here at Osri 2017 in Brisbane. Uh, today, what I wanted to share with you is how many organizations are using geo-driven decision-making for better insights, improved business decisions, actually to drive innovation, and ultimately to spatially enable their digital enterprise. Now, before I begin and go any farther, I want to level set with you. Um, unlike my other peers, I'll be up here on stage. Um, I'm not a GIS expert. Um, I don't have a GIS background. However, um, I, I do know what a latitude and longitude is, and I can kind of explain what a spatial projection is. So I'm, I'm somewhat dangerous. But I think you'll find as I go through my presentation today is that I and others at SAP are absolutely passionate about this topic. I've been going to the Esri user conferences in San Diego and the partner developer conferences in Palm Springs uh, for the last nine years. So when I had the opportunity to come here to Osri, I absolutely jumped at the chance. Because the reason is I wanted to share with you what we're seeing from a business perspective, which is that organizations and enterprises that combine business and spatial data have a clear competitive advantage and differentiation. Full stop, we see it every day. And when I talk with organizations about the power of being able to bring enterprise and spatial data together, I always try to emphasize two key points. The first is, this is real, this is happening. This isn't science fiction. And two, this is really more than just about points on a map. It's about driving business value, improving business decisions, and ultimately driving spatial actually into your business processes. And the reason I share that with you all is that I actually look at you and actually see that you have a tremendous opportunity to drive the same narrative and message within your own organizations. The fact of the matter is, and something we have to acknowledge, is that the digital economy is real and digital business is here to stay. The digital economy is going to affect whole industries. It's going to blur the line between industries. It's going to create new business models. It's going to flip existing business models on their head. And early adopters are going to win. In a recent poll of CEOs, 90% believed that the digital economy was going to affect their industry. About 50% were concerned they were not going to be able to keep up from a technology perspective. And only a very small fraction, about 15%, had any sort of strategy in place to deal with this reality. And when we talk about the digital economy, we're talking, of course, about some newcomers, ones, some companies you've heard, of course, Uber, who has completely disrupted the, the taxi industry. In fact, it's so disruptive, there are some places I go to, it's actually been outlawed. You can't even get them. They're outlawed in cities and countries. But you better believe there's logistics companies out there that are actually really closely looking at that business model. It's quite interesting. Then you have Airbnb that, that has completely transformed the, the lodging industry. And also you have what I'll call more traditional companies, Siemens, which is now a software company in the cloud connecting their assets to customers and, and generating whole new revenue streams. In other words, they're not just selling the asset, they're selling the output of the asset. Companies like Under Armour, not just an athletic apparel company, but they now have a, a supported and hosted digital platform hosting over 40 million athletes. And the list goes on and on. The fact of the matter is that the digital economy is inevitable, it's irreversible, and it's only accelerating. And those early adopters, like some, like some of those I just mentioned, they're winning. Compared to the peers, they have a higher revenue, higher profit margin, and bigger market cap. And they all understand one critical thing too, is that data is the digital currency. They understand that data is everywhere. There's not a shortage of it anymore. And there's also new data sources. There's new data sources coming up all the time. They're seeing data sources now that they wouldn't have believed existed just a few years ago. But they're also anticipating they're going to be seeing data sources in the future that they're not anticipating. And ultimately, there's new demands on this data. It's just simply not good enough to ask questions like, well, what happened last week or last month or last quarter or even what's happening right now? You want to know what's going to happen and why is it going to happen with machine learning, predictive, and also then taking action on it with artificial intelligence. The key here is that you need to be able to transform data into insight. You need to make better decisions with all this data. You need to be able to act in the moment in real time and actually be agile. 
and also innovate without constraints. Yes, you need a strong digital core to run your core business processes and business, business systems, but you also need to be able to innovate at the edge. The challenge, of course, is that these silos complete an incomplete picture. And you'll probably run into this all the time in your organizations. You have enterprise applications like ERP systems and CRM systems that actually have information about finances, operations, marketing, customers, and suppliers. This is typically your structured data. And this is typically what you use analytic tools to, to analyze this information with. You, of course, have unstructured data. Some might call this big data, massive amounts of data that's coming from all these new, new sources, Facebook, Twitter, messages. Photos and videos are becoming big. Biometric data. GIS systems, of course, which you're very familiar with. The system of record for maps, where you create, edit, publish, and version maps. These include geographic data and layers, as well as networks, road networks, rail networks, uh, utility networks. And of course, it's interesting to see what's on the face of the earth, but what, what about inside a building, inside a manufacturing plant or facility, or actually inside a machine and be able to explore that in 2D and 3D? Sensors and devices, everything is connected now. Watches, your phones, your cars, wind turbines, smart meters, uh, wells, all these are connected. Even appliances are now connected. And earth observation, and going beyond just imagery data, but actually looking at quantifiable information about what's happening on the face of the earth, land use and population, climate and weather, as well as surface conditions like vegetation, soil, water, snow, things along those lines. So you can see there's a plethora of information, but, but because they're siloed, you don't get a complete picture. So clearly the solution is to gain value from all this data together, to be able to seamlessly integrate, process, analyze, and bring this together. Ultimately, developing the next class, the next generation of innovative solutions that you never thought were possible before. So what's an example of something like that? If we were to pull together Earth observation data, as well as GIS information and structure data. So here's a recent project we worked on around landslide predictions in Japan. Now, for those of you who have been to Japan, you know it's a beautiful country, but it is susceptible to natural disasters like earthquakes and floods and landslides. So, so in this particular scenario, what we wanted to do was, with a high degree of probability, actually predict landslides. So using things like earth observation data around vegetation and soil and the steepness and grade, as well as incoming weather patterns, to then predict using machine learning and predictive algorithms, where would a landslide occur? Then drilling in on that landslide area, then bringing in GIS data to understand parcels of land, structures, facilities, homes that could be affected by that landslide area. The idea was to give at least a 10-day warning to customers as well as citizens in the area that may be affected by this. But then we want to go a step further. We then want to start predicting and running what-if analysis. Where should, based on where we know a landslide is going to occur, where should we put rescue encampments? Where should we set up assets? Uh, wh where, and be able to run these what-if ana analysis as well as optimization scenarios to see where's the best place. Then after the event, being able to compare before and after to see exactly where the destruction occurred, where the flooding is, and then again, repositioning all your different assets from an emergency and, and rescue perspective. But again, this is a really clear example of bringing together these various types of data, structured data, GIS data, and earth observation data. Now, knowing that spatial adds a new dimension to business data, our strategy at SAP has, to, has been to spatially enable our entire stack. So from our business suite to analytics, our line of business cloud, our cloud platforms, our mobile devices, as well as, well as our, our database products as well. We've been able to spatially enable the entire stack, allowing to be able to ask questions both spatially and non-spatially and bring them together. So now our customers can ask questions like, not just who's my most profitable customer in a postal code, but ask a question like, who's my most profitable customer five meters from the roadway? Or ask a question like, who are my customers that have a high probability to be in the flood zone due to the incoming storm? Or after the storm, insurance companies asking, where is there possible fraud being committed based on the claims being submitted that, are, that were not in that disaster area? Being able to ask questions like, where should I put my next store or facility to better support my customers based on location demographics? As well as doing things like 
predictive maintenance and like pipeline integrity management, being, look, being able to look at certain pipes with a condition within a certain distance of sensitive buildings and areas like, like roads, railways, as well as schools and hospitals. In other words, being able to ask and answer a whole new set of questions. The reality is, though, that we didn't do this alone. We've been working with Esri for the last 20 years on this, and our strategy, or our joint strategy, has been very clear. It's to bridge the silos between GIS and enterprise systems, and we've done just that with bi-directional integration between Esri and the SAP platform. And the good news is, is that we have a lot of customers doing this today, leveraging direct integration with the ERP system or business suite with Esri, analytics, our cloud platform, line of business, cloud applications, our mobile work manager, and then more recently, our flagship and memory database platform, SAP HANA. So today, Esri ArcGIS Pro, Desktop, Enterprise, and even more recently, Insights can connect directly to HANA as a native data store and processing engine. And some really exciting news, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but later this year, SAP HANA will be a supported geodatabase for Esri. So really exciting. The fact is there's customers doing this today, hundreds of them. And, but some of them are actually developing some really interesting, compelling, and innovative solutions. Let me share some of those with you right now. First is Memorial Care Health System. So this is clearly in the healthcare area. Memorial Care is a health delivery system in Southern California. So what they do is they work with large employers in the area to basically provide health care coverage for, for their employees. Now the challenge is, is that the business development folks need to understand who are the providers that can provide actually the services to all their employees and also be able to run coverage analysis, being able to look at do, will all these employees get adequate coverage from specialists, doctors, and facilities as well. The challenge from a technical perspective is a lot of the data that they needed was very disparate. It was like throughout the organization and even outside the organization, and it was very large, much of it not geocoded. So it became a very laborious task, and, not very, and even though this was an iterative process, they weren't, able, they weren't very agile about it, and they weren't able to be agile in terms of their analytics. So what they needed was a powerful spatial analytic platform to be able to do trade area and market share analytics. And what they chose was to leverage SAP, HANA, as well as Esri, and a third-party solution called CyberTech Healthcare Solution to actually bring all this information together. And they were able to get this analytics down from, from minutes and sometimes, or hours and sometimes days, down to less than a minute. This allowed them to be much more agile, reduce the lead time, they could actually be more, react, more interactive, and ultimately it was a lower total cost because they weren't moving data all around and ultimately, customers and the employers getting good coverage recommendations. So a great example, pulling all this disparate data together. Another interesting one is Munich RE. Munich RE is a reinsurance company based in, of course, Munich. So basically, they reinsure insurance companies. So they're all about minimizing risk. So as you can imagine, uh, what they're interested in are things like natural disasters as well. In this particular case, they're interested in wildfires, being able to predict them, being able to model them more effectively, and basically being able to have, be smarter about writing policies and underwriting policies for that. But this is another great example of pulling in uh, earth observation data around vegetation information, GIS data around parcels of land, and also structure data on claims. By pulling all this information together, they now could look at and provide predictions around wildfire areas with great cer greater certainty. They could then look at before and after wildfires using earth observation, what the extent of damage would be due to a wildfire. And then ultimately feeding this into their models, their predictive models for risk, for risk maps and other type of risk profiles that they could then use in the future. Ultimately, what this leads to is a, is a higher probability and higher certainty of the risk that they're underwriting, and ultimately, for their customers, the insurance companies, allow them to write more policies. And finally, I'll talk about the award-winning City of Cape Town EPIC solution. EPIC stands for Emergency Policing and Incident Command. Now, as you imagined, the City of Cape Town is in South Africa, a city of about 3.8 million people. They have about 4,000 emergency personnel, about 1,800 vehicles, and uh, around six different emergency groups. 
And uh, the issue they had was that because it was all disparate throughout these different groups, they didn't have a consolidated view of what was going on throughout the entire city. So using an Esri and SAP HANA platform, they were able to consolidate all this information by improving security and safety, as well as preparedness and prevention. They can now see on a command post in the command center all the different assets, their status, the incidents. They could dispatch those particular assets and, and also be able to have better resource utilization. So this was a great example of pulling this information together and ultimately helping save lives. So thank you for your time today. As you can see, geo-driven decision-making is real. It's happening. And organizations of all kinds can and should get started today on their spatial uh, journey and being able to spatially enable their digital enterprise. And my final thought with you also, as well as I challenge you to take this message to your organizations, to have, to have a spatially led digital transformation. Thank you very much.